So today we're going to talk about governing those things that God has put you over. Governing those things that God has put you over. And, and when, we're, when we're young, uh, God puts us over a few things. And, uh, and he sees that, and many times what we see is we see that, God, you know, it isn't working in our favor. And we start reaching up to God and we start asking God to help us. And we start getting a clue as we grow up that we need God. And our parents, we look at our parents and they talk nothing but Jesus and God and, and they give us some tips and they give us some demands and this and that. And then we finally realize that God is, God is our answer and he's the one that sets us up on high. It really isn't your education because I'll tell you, God can take somebody that doesn't have any education and set them up on high. I mean, people, are, there's, there's thousands and thousands of people that are millionaires and they, they never went to college. They, never, they went and never did get an education, but they are able to go out and make things work. Isn't that why we go to get an education many times? Isn't that really why we go? Or do, or you, or do you go to college and say, well, I'm going to be a brain surgeon and I just have a passion on, on helping people with their brains? Or do you say, hey, I, I got an ability to do that, and so I'm going to school, and it's all about making money. It's what it is. Really, it is, unless you become a minister and something like that, and we, hopefully that's because you got a call in your life. But I want to talk today, I want to talk today about you ruling your, your household. You ruling this, but you also, as a parent, ruling your home. In Joshua 24, 15, Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's the end of it. That's all I'm going to say out of there. So you don't need to go there. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And then what's this we stuff? Oh, he says, oh, my wife and my children. And they usually had a lot of kids. And he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How would you like to have Joshua as your dad? He goes out and he kills people all day. And he looks at you when he comes home at night and he says, you will pray. As he puts his bloody sword away. You better believe, dad, I'm going to pray. You know, I've been killing those guys all day. And he looks at you with a look like, do what I tell you to do. Amen. This is what God expects out of us. This is what God expects out of us. He expects us to rule our household well. To rule it well. We go into Ephesians, and you can go there, Ephesians uh, chapter 5. And everything has a structure to it, and we're to do our part. And this is really a bid for the men to be men, men to be husbands of God, and the women to submit under the husband. Amen? Amen and the children to submit under the rulership of the house. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the family. In every area, whether there's a thief that breaks in, dad gets up, we don't get to have the baby get up, we look to dad and say, get up and take care of it. We got a thief in the house. But spiritually, in some cases, we got the wife getting up and taking on the guy that's in the house as we lay in bed, us men. He says, therefore, as a church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. That's a, quite a burden put on the husband because he's supposed to be running the show. But he said, let them be subject to him in everything. That's, the, uh, the husband watches over the, everything. He watches over the type of food that's being fed to the family. He watches over the clothes and the cleaning of the house. He watches over all those things that others are supposed to be doing in the house. He watches over that and says, why isn't it done? He doesn't let everything get stacked up dirty and filthy around the house and the dust where he can write his name in it, if that's somebody else's job and not his, he asks, why is this like this? He rules his own house well, but he's the savior of that home because he's the one 
that prays at night and gets all the family together and prays and says, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. Joshua said, as for me and my house, it will always be that time to pray and I will gather them in, amen, when it's time to pray. As for me and my house, you say, I will govern my home like I should. I will make sure it's being done right. I will not allow the enemy to come in, and if he comes in, I will drive him out in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why it's so important for a man to walk with God, because he has to govern his whole household, and he's got to do it right. And if the wife is to submit to him, he's got to have something going on in his, in his life that the wife is supposed to submit to, something that's all godly and all structured by God. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's what it's all about, that we give ourselves, we give ourselves to our family, to our household, to make sure it's all right. And even when the household says, I don't like doing this, you say, you have to do it. Or you can't be a part of this household. You have to do it, or you can't be a part of this household. You have to obey what I want in this house. And the obedience is, we're going to pray to God right now, and I want to see, and see a good prayer from you. And not only that, I'm looking for the presence of the Holy Spirit, so you better be right with God, or there won't be any presence of God. You're looking at everything in the Spirit. You judge all things that are spiritual. You're looking for, this is what we're looking for, Dad, to be the priest of the house. Amen? Amen? And anybody that's got a problem with that, they're out of line, according to the Bible. But dad is a good, be a good priest. A lot of people say, I'd follow my dad. I'd follow my dad if he was a, a good dad and he prayed like he should and he governed like he should. Well, this is a bid to the dads to take up that place. Amen? Take up that role that God has called you to. Because the, the sanctification of your family depends on it. What Jesus was supposed to do is he was supposed to die, and he did die. And he gave his life for the family, we call it the family of Christ. He gave his life for the church. He cleansed it by obedience to the Father. And that's what we're to do. We're to be that light in the midst of darkness. We're to be that strength in the midst of weakness. We must be strong. We must be obedient. And we must demand perfection. Say, well, where, where does Jesus demand perfection? Well, if you read in Revelation, Jesus really demands perfection. If you read in the churches, he really demands perfection. He looks at the heart. He looks at what conduct is being done, and he always gives everybody grace. He says, I gave that woman a space to repent. You, all, you, don't, you, you watch how you, how you govern your family, but it all boils down to this. Do what I tell you to do. Do what I tell you to do because it's good for you. Submit unto your husbands. Satan has turned this thing upside down. We got women that will not submit to their husbands, will not submit to God. There's wives out there that they do what they want to do. And, they, and not only that, they said this is co-leadership this is I'm I'm here and you're here and we're together anything with two heads is a monster no the husband is up here and I'll prove it by the Bible it says that Christ is the head of the man and and the woman is a head the woman is underneath the man Christ is the head of the man and the man is the head of the woman amen and and if he's over the woman then he's supposed to be doing the thinking and bring in I want to tell you something I pray with my wife every night and every night I anoint her with oil. Every night I anoint her with oil. And there's not, and, and, and I pray, I pray against the powers of darkness that, that want to get upon her or she's sick. I pray on her and I make sure, I even make sure that her bed is ready. Amen. I do that every night. You know? And the reason why I do that is because that's my job. And there's nights I'm just so tired. I just think to myself, oh my golly. But I know that it's right because she'll be tormented by hell if I, don't, if I don't anoint her, don't pray over, and don't shoo away the darkness. There's just some things that she can't get away. 
some things that she can't shoo away in her life. And with one prayer out of my mouth, one prayer, it can change her night, whether she sleeps right or not. When you start serving the Lord, the enemy comes against you like a flood. And that's when the man rises up because God gives you the strength to be able to take care of everything in your family. Not only yourself, but everything in your family. He gives you the strength to do that. And that is what God expects out of us. Men that cannot pray with their wives or pray with their children and adult demand that say, hey, we're all praying together tonight. That's just the way it is. Well, I got to go there and I got to go. Hey, I said we're all praying together. Lots of times that, had, that goes good for a while and, and the woman says, oh, I'm so glad, I'm so glad he finally took over his role. But wait, rebellion's coming in because after a while it's just like, I don't think it works. No, it works. It works. Prayer works. And not only that, God is going to bless the man who takes charge. God is going to bless the man when I see anything in my home that I detect that's out of order, anything that's being listened to on the TV, even if it's a cartoon by my children, and I hear that, hey, I don't think that's God. I think that's wrong. I think you've just stepped over the line. I say something, and I demand that it be shut off. Oh, it's just a little cartoon. It's a nasty little cartoon. And I won't have it in this home. That's, how you, that's what God expects out of us. And if there's anyone in my home that I would hear cussing, you die. You better have a real good reason. You better fell off the ladder a thousand feet or something. You better lost control. But just to be saying certain things in your home and go, whatever. We need restrictions and guidelines in our home and only the father can give them and uphold them yeah. it's our job as husbands it's our job as the priests of the home to make sure the whole home is sanctified it's not the wife's job it's the husband's job and it's his job to make sure that she falls underneath him and does exactly what he says and he be, be, better be saying everything as if it was Jesus there. Amen? It says in the Bible that a woman should not absurd authority over a man or even teach a man. It says that. And why is that? Because Paul wants men to be the priests. They are the priests of the family. And they're to take that role serious. And Paul says, wherever you go, he says, you be the one that teaches. You be the one that gets the revelation of God and you pass that down to your wife and children. You do that. It's out of order any other, any other way. It's out of order. Not that your wife can't help you. Help you. She was called to be a helpmate. Amen? She was called to be a helpmate. Help you to be a king. Amen? And when, we, when you women see that the husbands are lacking in a certain area with all humility, you go to them and you tell them, listen, you're not really in your throne like you should be. You're slipping out of it. I encourage you to get back in it and I'll uphold you. That's a woman's place to encourage a man to get back in the throne. I'll submit, but you're not giving out the orders like you need to give out the orders. I'll submit to you, but I'm encouraging you President, get back in the helm. Get back at the pulpit. Amen. Amen. Get back into the Oval Office. You're in the wrong place. You need to get back and be president. If a president wasn't being president. Everyone would encourage him, be, get back where you need to be. But we're living in a hard time. We're living in a hard time. In 1 Timothy 3.8, it says that in the last time, perilous times shall come. I want, to, I, want you to, I want you to see something here. In Tim, 1 Timothy 3.8, Likewise, ye deacons, be grave and not double-tongued, not given to much wine, 
not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proven. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave and not slanders, not sober, faithful in all things. They must, before you can be a deacon, you, uh, this is how it is. They look at your home and they say that your wife, this is how she must be found. Grave, not a slander, sober, faithful in all things. That's how his wife should be. You can't even be a deacon unless their wives are right. Hey, your wife is wrong. You can't be a deacon. You can't, you can't govern the church because it's obvious you're not governing your home. Joshua, as for me and my house. See, his wife would be a sober type of person. Not a slander. See, he would hear her slander and he says, hey, honey, you can't do that. Or I can't be a deacon. I can't even help in the church if you're going to act like that. So stop it. I want to do something for God. Paul says that's one of the restrictions. So, that, so you see, the husband is the priest of the house. He's got a mighty responsibility. And God expects that. Let me go on. They must prove themselves. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their home well. What if they don't rule it well? Can't be a deacon. Can't be an elder in the church. You can't do it. Because if you can't run your home, you can't run the church. It won't work. If you're a pushover at home, you're a pushover at church. See? See how important it is? Is that you govern your home like you should. You pray with your people like you should. You anoint your wife and children like you should. You demand out of that teenager like you should. Because if you can't get him to do it, when you get to church, how are you going to get them to do it? Amen? Well, my, my, my boy gives me a hard time. My daughter just looks at me like with hate in her face. So I just decide to give up. You can't be a deacon. You can't work in the church. God says he looks at your home. He looks at how you're doing there. And he says you're governing your house well. This is your attitude, man. As for me in my house, they will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Everything serves God in our house. That's just the way it is. It's not if you want to. And you know what you're doing in there? You're presenting your whole family without spot and wrinkle under the Lord. You pray over your wife. You make sure Satan's kicked out. No matter how hard a day you've had, you make sure that things are right. You approach your children and say, I think, I think I heard you say something in your room that wasn't according to the rules of this house. That'll never happen again. Ever. That's the attitude. And when God sees you take any other approach to that, he says, you can't rule in the church. Why don't I have the power? Because you're not ruling at home like you should. Why is God not honoring me? Because you don't honor God. God says, this is how I want you to honor me. Rule your house well. Proverbs 13, 24 says, if you spare the rod, you'll spoil your children. Or you spoil the child. You know what a spoiled piece of meat is? It's sickening. It stinks. Amen? And when you, and when you spare correction... You cause your children to stink. Their attitudes stink. Amen? In 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7. Let's go back there. We're to have a little wisdom. It says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, that's a husband, that they also with, without the word would be won by the conversation of the wife. You see how the wife is supposed to be? That she would actually win her husband over and have him take the, take the place that he's supposed to take. 
be the priest of the house just by looking at the wife, how she's governing herself. She's helping him to get in his place. That she would win his, her husband over to Christ. While they behold, the husband beholds the conversation of the wife coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of the plating of hair and the wearing of gold and putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. This is how the woman is to be, submissive, honorable, broken, before her husband and she will bring him to Christ just by being that way honey whatever you want let me know and he just says wow you've so changed and you win him to Jesus by that for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands the holy women of old we need that family to come back, the holy family of old. To come back and be submissive to what dad is saying. Or should be saying. Everybody should help dad be dad. Everybody should help the priest of the house be the priest. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord. Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him my Lord. Oh my golly, have we strayed from it? Didn't even call him Abraham. Abram? No, didn't even call him by his name. Had so much respect for Abraham that she called him my Lord. What do you want me to do? That's, that's how we're to be. Father, not hey you. It's total respect in the home. Total submissiveness in the home. In the end days, it's sad to say that perilous times will come. And we see this. And, and the one thing that we'll see that in 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says, Perilous times have come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient and unto parents. The home is in disarray. The home is dismantled, he said in the end days. When the children are disobedient to the parents, the, the, the home is dismantled. We can't have that as Christians. We need to rise up as men. We need to rise up, oh, let's, this Christian family. The families need to rise up and see how it's supposed to be done. And this is how it's supposed to be done. If anyone is to learn anything in that home, they're to get it from, their man, from the father who's supposed to teach them. The husband that is supposed to teach. The revelation is supposed to come from the husband. The first one to be able to heal and set captives free is the priest, it's supposed to be the husband. The one that makes all the difference in the world is supposed to be the husband. And then it filters on down and said, how did you get this? How did you get this power? Somebody might ask the little one of the family, says, my daddy prays. And we pray. And we see healing all the time. We see how we're supposed to be. And the children to be honored in the schools. Why? Because that's what we do at home. Be a disobedient to parents. And, the, and there's another one that says they're fierce. The children are fierce, wild, savages, uncivilized. That's what's going on. How many times have we, we heard that the, the, the dad or the mother got shotgunned down by one of the children, got shot by one of the children? Savages, total demon-possessed. We need to kick Satan out of our homes. We need to kick him out of our lives. We need to deal with those things that are in our family. Sometimes it's uh, the children are so full of insecurity that they, they, they're, they're a total different person when they, when they need to be that good person before God. That the security, insecurity rises up and when we say in the church, let us all sing, they're so worried about what somebody thinks. Oh, I can, I can. I'm so worried about people around me. Be worried about what God thinks. And everybody else will get really tiny in your life. Amen? Amen. 
but everybody else is so big and tall in your life because of insecurity. Insecurity makes you small. Security makes you tall. And when you're tall, everybody else is small. But God, amen? Take control of your home, Father. Take control of your home and bring Jesus to it. Govern it right. Bring yourself to Jesus Christ. Ask for forgiveness for not governing your family right. And get with the program. Ask for forgiveness of not doing it right. Ask forgiveness of allowing the children just to run wild. Get back in it. Do it right with love, but do it. Amen. Stay tuned. Pastor Legner will be right back with the conclusion of today's message. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you tuned in. You know, we were talking about the role of the husband in the family, how he's to be the head of the family, how he is to be the priest of the family, how he's supposed to be the one that when he prays, heaven moves in the family. And, and the wife is to be the helpmate in, in subjection unto him. In other words, that she goes to the husband and says, hey, I need you to pray to God. We need a miracle in our home. And that you're a man that is constantly in contact with God. You're constantly lifting up things before the Lord. You're constantly doing what God wants you to do. And you see in the Bible that you cannot even be a leader in the church if you don't govern your house well. You must govern your house well. You must be able to watch over your children that you've got good kids. And that the, the wife is not a slander, but you've taught her to be right. You're the teacher of the home, you husbands. You're the teacher. God's looking to you. And then when you do a good job there, God says, now I need you in my church to do a job. What we have today is we got elders that don't, do not govern their homes well. And the children, the children are doing bad things. They're robbing banks. They're on drugs. They're having illicit sex that's going on in their homes. And they, uh, and they allow it to go on. And then they think that they should be leaders. Listen, this whole thing needs to change. We're in the end times. God is calling for a change. He's calling for a change in the church. And, but it starts at the home. It starts at the home. So I encourage you men, get back with the Lord like you need to do. Start putting restrictions on your homes where it needs to be governed in holiness. Lay down your life for your family. Lay down your life for the sake of your family. And start putting some guidelines in there. And remember to love your children and let them know that they're loved. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week.